And on this D-Day anniversary, we visit a side of World War II that has been kept secret for 70 years. For a North Texas man, a simple cabinet that he bought three decades ago has led to the revelation of a very dark secret, a wartime story so difficult to hear, it may never have been told, if not for a Dallas man and a chance purchase. Can you tell? Can I tell? No. <laughs> Just looking at this 100-year-old cabinet, you'd never see it. Take, give it a tug. Oh. oh my gosh. Hidden behind the mail slots, a secret compartment. And inside, a passport, a 1930 wedding book, documents, and underneath it all, letters. I had huge expectations, even at that moment, of what was going to be inside the drawer. And then all of a sudden you see a language that you can't even comprehend? Exactly. Jesus, alle Zeit hier trahmen. That was 30 years ago when Tim Mallet bought this cabinet from the estate of a woman named Helen Seba, a woman who had died at a Detroit elder care facility where he worked. The long secret letters he discovered were all written in German. Translation attempts over decades fell short until 20 years ago. I gave her the letters and um, she went away for a couple of days. She was visiting, I think, from Hamburg and came back in tears and just said, horrible, awful, terrible. That translator would say no more. Too painful to even describe, she said. But finally, in 2014, a full translation. The letters had come from Willie Weiss, the brother of Helen Seba, a doctor during World War II, married to wife Dora, father to their 13-year-old daughter Ulla, living in a small northeastern town in Germany. The letters were written by a woman named Olga, who'd taken refuge with the Weiss family. She detailed, as Hitler's army was losing the war in the West, Russian soldiers were entering Germany from the east. And then came the moment those soldiers entered the Weiss home. For safekeeping for Ulla, they wrapped her in burlap, and Dr. Weiss sat on her. And the Russians found them in the cellar, and they uh, took his wife, Dora, Mrs. Weiss, and they raped her, and they made, they made him watch. They forced him to watch them. Word by word on the now 74-year-old paper, the secrets held in this drawer came spilling out. The Russians caught wind that there was a young girl there, and they broke in, and they pulled her away and uh, came back sometime later with her and said they were coming back in a, in a half hour and there'd be more soldiers. They particularly were interested in young Ulla. The letters say Russian soldiers raped Ulla, but what these words reveal next are simply unimaginable. The little girl comes back and she says to her father, she says, Vati, V-A-T-I, at least is how it's translated letter, I want to die, please kill me. And he's, are, are, are you certain? And she says, yes, Daddy, I want to die. I, I, I don't want them to come back for me. The final letter says Willie Weiss then gave his daughter medication to relax and then potassium cyanide. Olga wrote that Willie wanted the three of them to die together. His wife was next, and he did the same thing. And in the letters, you know, they say that he, he held her. And, and they talk about uh, very intimate words the two of them exchanged, and he, he was with her till he knew that she was gone. Then the very ink that fell to this paper in 1945 carefully describes Willie Weiss taking his final breath as he lays down next to his beloved daughter and wife. It's difficult to put into words, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's the first thought from Frank Pringham of Atlanta when Tim Mallard found him. Frank is Helen Seba's grandson. Willie Weiss was the great uncle he had never known about until the secret letters. So that was something to behold. I, I, I still tear up when I, when I either read the letters or somebody uh, talks about them. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a moving experience. And the side of the war you've never heard, the significance of what you just heard, though, takes on even deeper meaning when you read the date on the last letter. It was written less than one week before the Germans surrendered and World War II in Europe was over. As for the cabinet, Tim and Frank have agreed that Tim is going to keep it. As for the letters, they are combining forces and currently considering donating them to a museum. They want to find the right place so that the story will never be hidden again.